Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is Monday, the 3rd of August. We have the markets trading lower here today. Let's turn over to the Grain Hedge Trading Platforms here. We closed off the day. Corn down two and a half cents to 378 and three quarters on the December contract. Soybeans down three cents to 937 and a quarter on the November contract. And wheat in Chicago here uh, up one and a quarter, one and a half cents to uh, five dollars and three quarter cents. So finally over five dollars here on that September contract. That is good to see. This morning we did get an announcement out of Ukraine. They're expecting to see uh, overall exports rising to 36 million metric tons, up from 34.9 million metric tons last year. This July's uh, exports were running uh, pretty pretty hot. They were running 13% over last year. Uh, they saw 2.5 million metric tons inspected in July alone. So that was very positive to see for Ukraine. Also out this, uh, this week, something we're going to want to be paying close attention to is the FC Stone yield estimates uh, for 2015 corn and soybean crop. That's going to be announced at 3.30 Central Time on Tuesday. Informa will be announcing their crop estimates on Wednesday, so we're going to want to pay close attention to both of those reports when they come out. Also interesting, something starting up here today was the MDA Crop Tour. Now this is a tour that goes before the Pro Farmer Crop Tour, kind of giving us an idea of overall uh, yield potential, uh, taking into account some, uh, some survey-based uh, results, uh, taking into account some field samples. And so one thing that we saw out of the results here that came out today, along with some great pictures from the field, uh, is the fact that there is a number of counties that were below the Planalytics yield. Now the Planalytics yield right now is basically on par with the USDA, but areas, uh, counties where Planalytics uh, is expecting to see slightly higher yield, uh, we're seeing the MDA come in there, uh, do a little bit of, uh, of, of field work, and, and it looks as though, for the most part, now this is only six stops, so this is not a very large test sample size, uh, but we are seeing slightly lower uh, yield than what was projected by Planalytics. Now, neither one is necessarily right or wrong because, like I said, uh, when you're doing these field tests, you're getting a, a relatively small sample size. Uh, from Planalytics' point of view, uh, they're getting a completely different, they're using a different metric. They're using satellite imagery. They're using uh, the NDVI index, which is measure, measuring the greenness with one kilometer uh, representing one pixel. So in general, what we're seeing here uh, is just two, uh, two different ways of coming up uh, with yield forecasts. And it is very interesting to look at both the pluses and the minuses of both of them. We're gonna be paying close attention to that MDA crop tour here in the days to come. This morning, we did get export inspections out today. Uh, corn coming in at 920,000 metric tons. That was within analyst expectations and above, or excuse me, and below last week's uh, number. So it was within analyst expectations, no major surprise. Certainly didn't help, didn't really hurt the market here today. When you look at soybeans, we got had 148,000 metric tons inspected for export. That's above last week and fell within analyst expectations. So again, no major surprise there, but it was positive picking up over last week. And wheat coming in here, missing analyst expectations, lower than last week. A real disappointment here with 298,000 metric tons inspected for export. Let's turn our attention over the charts, just see what the damage is done on this Monday. You'll look at the daily corn chart. This is a candlestick chart. Each one of these bars is representing one day worth of price activity. And you'll notice the farthest bar to the right there uh, is, is today's uh, trade action. And uh, one thing you'll notice about today's trade action is it tried to push lower here, but was unable to hold on to those losses, was able to bounce back by the close, closing in the middle part of the range. To me, this is relatively positive. It's, it's, it's not necessarily neutral. Uh, I would say it's weighed slightly to the positive side of things, but by no means an indicator of a rebound. We're going to have to see how the day uh, trade unfolds here in the, in the day and weeks to come. Uh, of course, when you look at soybeans, this is a slightly different scenario. To me, this is a little bit more of a bullish indicator. Uh, what we saw today is uh, trying to move lower, trying to impulse lower through the lows that we saw on the 27th. We were able to do that. We moved lower, uh, found some buying pressure, ended up closing right about near where we opened here today, uh, but with you know a pretty big range. And to me, this is a little bit bullish. Uh, this shows that we tried to push lower. There wasn't enough selling interest. Uh, in fact, there was buying interest. 
and, and it's quite possible that we could see a follow through to the upside here tomorrow. When you look at the weather, this is one thing that really isn't putting uh, much of a, a excitement in terms of bullish excitement into the market simply because it is just optimal growing conditions out there. Cooler than normal uh, conditions will prevail throughout most of the week uh, as well as above average moisture uh, really covering the entire grain belt. So when you look at the weather outlook here this week, uh, that's going to be a negative for um, for prices moving forward. When you look at the one week out, uh, you'll notice it looks as though it's going to be slightly cooler than normal, uh, but with not nearly as much precipitation as we're expecting this week. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the crop progress report. This came out after the market closed at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You'll notice corn conditions here were unchanged. That was within the analyst expectations, uh, so it's very positive to see, to see that uh, really we haven't seen a huge pickup in overall crop conditions, but we haven't seen the kind of deterioration that people were expecting to see earlier on in the marketing year when we had so much rain saturating the eastern grain belt. 90% uh, of this corn crop is silking, so we're now moving on to the grain filling time period for the majority of the crop. Soybean conditions here came out with 63% good to excellent. That is up 1% in the good to excellent category here from the 62% that we saw last week. So that is good to see. Uh, soybean conditions finally seeing some improvement here, but not uh, a substantial improvement. We do have uh, the critical part of the growing season still uh, yet to come. August is going to be very important, and obviously uh, optimal growing conditions are going to be necessary here uh, to get uh, uh, or to, to keep crop conditions from deteriorating, which they typically do. We do typically see crop conditions deteriorate on average throughout the, the year, and we just haven't seen the same sort of deterioration yet. We'll have to see if, uh, if the weather uh, continues to throw at us just nearly perfect uh, conditions here for the second half of the growing, or growing season. When you look at winter wheat, we're 93% harvested. We're above the 85% harvested uh, level, which is the four-year moving average. Spring wheat here shedding 1% in the good to excellent, so declining a little bit uh, down to 70% good to excellent. But in general, no major surprises there for the crop conditions report. Uh, we'll be waiting uh, to see what uh, the results for the MDA crop tour is out tomorrow. And then, of course, like I said, FC Stone yield estimates also going to be coming down the pipe and most likely affecting the markets. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, please give the office a call. The number is 877-472-4607. If you haven't done so already, take a demo of our 14-day free trial. See what it's like to have live quotes in the palm of your hand. See what it's like to be able to execute trades when you need to, when the market conditions present an opportunity. Uh, and, and of course, we'd be happy to help make sure you get the training necessary to get the most out of that 14-day free trial. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you here tomorrow for Tuesday.